Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 113. Now we're just going to continue on with our little chess script that we're creating and we're going to, well, let's just open up Unity and Mono Develop. And this one I just want to get a little bit of more visual indication of what items you can use in the game. So I want to change the default color of the shader that we're using for our, our chest. And let's just go ahead and open up Unity, or sorry, Mono Develop, and let's get started with that. The first thing I'm going to want to do is store a default value that we have for the chest. And actually, if you look we at my chest, I have two parts, and you want to get a hold of the, the render parts, in this case, the mesh renders. So I have a mesh renderer there, I have one here, and I don't want to include uh, my particle system that I have attached to my chest. So I'm going to tell it to, well, I want somebody to tell it to go through and basically grab these two pieces. And of course, depending how your chest is constructed, you might want to grab other pieces. So we have a particle render attached to this one. Uh, since there's only two parts, I think the best way to do it would probably just be to expose a couple of public variables saying, you know, the parts uh, of this game object that you want to change the color on to basically brighten. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to come down right uh, above the state and I'm going to create an array of game objects. So public game object and don't forget the double braces for the to denote an array and I'll just call it parts. Now, I'm going to want to be able to store the default values that we have set for the, the main color property. Uh, sometimes I go in, even after an object's created, and I'll decide, you know, I don't quite like this color, and I'll play around with it and maybe change it to a color I actually do like. Uh, since I'm going to be changing this in-game, I'm going to want a way to be able to change it back to whatever it was before I gave it its basic highlight color. So let's make an array for that, too. So I'll say public, and this is going to be an area of color. And I'm just going to call this, I, actually this is going to be private. We don't need to expose this. And I'm just going to call it default colors. I'm not going to be using my update in this script, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Of course, every time I say that in the next tutorial, I find a reason to use it. But we'll just go into the start. And let's go ahead and basically store all those default parts now. So I'm going to say if parts.length is greater than zero, then we're going to iterate through each of them, storing the parts or storing their color in the proper index. So we'll say int cnt for a basic counter is equal to zero as long as cnt is less than their default colors and we're going to have to define that so we'll say cnt plus plus this is actually supposed to be dot length and let's let's go ahead and define that now so we're going to say default colors dot length is equal to parts dot length and then we store it so default colors and the index is going to be equal to parts and the index of the part dot renderer dot <clears throat> sorry <laughs> bit of a frog in my throat there material and we're going to get color. And the color we're going to get is the main color, which is underscore capital C L O R. And there we go, we have it stored. Now let's go down and create a new function. I'll put it down here, I'll make it private. Uh, it's not going to return anything, so I'll be void, and I'm just going to call it glow. Or highlight. Highlight sounds better. Now it will accept a property, and it will be a Boolean property. And I'll just call that property glow. 
Now basically all we want to do is check to see if glow is equal to true. Uh, if not, then it must be false. And we're going to be calling this from our, let me just copy the function name. We're going to be calling this from our mouse enter and mouse exit events. So I'll just put it here. And when the mouse enters, we want to pass in a true value. So we're basically going to highlight this chest that we're hovering over. And of course, when we mouse exit, we want to pass in a false value to put it back to its unhighlighted values. So let's cut this little piece of code that we typed up here. Because what we need down here is almost the exact same thing. I'll paste it in and then in model develop just highlight it all and hit tab to indent it. And basically the same thing. We're going to check to make sure that the part length is greater than zero. Uh, we're going to iterate through all of the default colors. And instead of assigning it to default, what we're going to say is take that part and we're going to set the color now instead of get the color. And we're going to be setting the main color. And we're going to want to set some sort of highlight color. Now you can go up top and define some sort of highlight color, or even multiple highlight colors. So maybe you're going to do red for, you know, the chest is locked and unable to open. Uh, maybe yellow, it's, you know, it's available to open, go ahead. Uh, you could create several different values for this for this color here. Uh, for right now, I just basically want to show which one's highlighted. So I'm just going to use a, one of the default colors. And let's do yellow. It's bright, but it's going to change the, the color of my chest. And I'm going to do the exact same thing down here in the else block. Except now, instead of setting it to yellow, and I actually be better off just cut and pasting this one up here. But now instead of setting it to yellow, this is during the mouse out or the mouse exit, I want to set it back to its default value. So I'm going to say default colors and then the color I have stored for that default color. So let's save this off. I'm going to head back into Unity, see if we have any errors. And I do have one about the array length. And I'm not quite sure what I was thinking about there. Uh, that's not how you define it. So default colors equals color. Then inside of the square parentheses, you tell it how big this array is. And we want it to be as big as the parts array. So let's save that off and we'll go back in. Don't forget your new keyword. <laughs> well, it is three in the morning. All right, so there we go. We got that done. I'm going to select my chest. And right here, part size. I'm just going to switch that to a two. And I guess I don't really need my state to be public anymore, so I can hide that. But I'm going to drop part one in, part two in. We'll hit play. And when I mouse over now, you see uh, basically my blue turns green. It adds a, a yellow tint, a very strong yellow tint to my chest. So it's a nice way to make stuff really pop out. So if I were to go ahead and duplicate this chest, let's duplicate it a few times and we'll just move them around a bit. And we'll move this one over here. Of course, we'll move one back and over a little bit. And we'll leave that one in the original spot. So if you ever want to know what chest you're over, this is a, a great visual way to tell. Now right now we don't have any code in place to make sure that they can only have one chest open at a time. And since it's going to be spawning items and I want basically one window to open up for all the items in a chest that you have availability, that you have the ability to pick from, uh, I only want one chest open at a time. So we'll just close them. And I'm going to delete all those extra chests. And since we have a little bit more time left, I also wanted to add a particle effect to my chest. So when it's opened, I turn this particle on, or this particle emitter on. 
So let's go into Mono Develop, and I'll just come right up to the top under the audio clips, and I'll just make a public game object. And I'm just going to call mine Particle Effect. Well, I guess actually, I think we have one called that. But not with the lowercase. And I'm going to cut and paste that variable into start. And I'm going to set its dot active property to equal fault at the start, just in case I accidentally add it to my chest, but I forgot to turn it off by default. And then I'll come down to on mouse enter right here. And right before the sound, I'll put the the particle effect, except this time I'm going to set the active to true. And I'll want to come down to close. And I'll want to set it to false again when it's closed. So let's go back into Unity. No error, so we'll start it up. And now when I open it, whoops, I forgot to actually assign it to my my chest. So it's right there. My particle effect will be right here. Another way is you could just actually search for it, but we'll, we'll just click uh, make it so that we can add it up here. So let's open it up. And there we go. I got a nice chest of steaming poisonous gas or something. And let's close it. And one last touch before we go is if you look at our, well, what I'm calling the loot chest, uh, we know that our script is going to require a box collider and an audio source to work. And while well, mine needs the animations, yours may or may not, but we do know that we need a box collider for the mouse events to work and an audio source to play the sounds. So let's go ahead into Mono Develop and let's make sure that it adds those by default. So I'm going to go in and in square brackets to say require component and then type of to tell it what type of component we want and the first one I'll add will be a box collider and I'm just going to cut and paste that line the second one we need is an audio source so A U D I O S there we go audio source I'll just save that off I'm going to come back into Unity. I am going to remove my chest script. Now I'm going to lose my prefab, but that's okay. That's fine. Remove the rest. And when we drag the chest script onto our chest, boom, we get them all. Now it seems that I'm going to have to move my collider around a bit to get it to where I want it to be. And I'm not too worried about play on awake because I don't actually have anything loaded in here. Uh, if I did, I'd probably want to script it to make sure that the play on awake is false. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.